My name is Kristen Bergman, and I'll be starting as an assistant professor in the Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences Department in the summer of 2015. And the aim of my research is to explore the interactions between the early evolution of complex life and the environments that hosted that life um, during this critical event in Earth's history. And this is particularly uh, useful because not only do we get a sense for uh, the potential drivers of early evolution, but we also get a sense for the extremes that the Earth's climate um, is capable of in, in the ancient past, in a world that might be very different from the modern. Uh, so in figuring out uh, what I wanted to uh, spend my career doing. Uh, I actually took a little bit of a roundabout path and after I graduated from college I taught uh, middle school earth and life science for three years and in designing a curriculum for the earth science class I ended up studying the local geology in and around um, the school in New Jersey and uh, some of the sedimentary rocks in that location preserve an environment that's very similar to the East African Rift. And within those sediments, you get preservation of mud cracks, uh, wave ripples, raindrop imprints, uh, burrows from worms and ancient bugs, and even dinosaur footprints. And uh, I had the students actually design experiments to explore uh, some of these different features that you can preserve in sedimentary rocks. And then we actually went out into the field to study how these features were actually preserved. And it was designing and teaching this unit that really cemented um, my desire to spend more time studying the interaction between the ancient environments and the life living in them. So I actually spend a lot of time traveling to remote places uh, to look at uh, specific rocks that preserve this key interval of Earth's history. And uh, recently I was in Oman in the Middle East looking at rocks there that preserve the transition uh, to complex animal life showing up in the fossil record. And when I'm in these remote places, I spend time describing the rocks, uh, drawing the rocks, and choosing samples um, of key rocks to bring back to the, to the lab. Uh, and uh, I also spend a lot of time walking and hiking because a given rock unit can preserve a range of environments spatially, laterally. Uh, if you think about walking the coastline from Massachusetts to Maine, you're going to capture s sandy environments with barrier islands as well as rocky environments. And it's similar looking at rocks in um, the past. And once I'm back in the lab, I analyze rocks um, using instruments like mass spectrometers. and. Uh, I also make very thin sections of rock that, that I can look at under a microscope. And this type of uh, thin section is really helpful for rocks of this age, not only because we can look at what the rocks are composed of, but much of the evidence for life at this time is microscopic. And so you can only see preserved cells of bacteria and other microbes in the microscope. And from there, I often take these thin sections um, to other instruments that can analyze the geochemistry at the microscopic scale. And that's helpful because suddenly we can answer questions about the exact sediments that are surrounding the fossils. So one of the methods that I explored at Caltech and that I plan to bring to MIT is this relatively new geochemical method that can constrain the precipitating temperature of ancient rocks, and in particular ancient carbonate rocks like limestone. And uh, this method gets at the um, temperature that ancient cells, shells, and sediments precipitated at 
in the ocean water. Temperature is a variable that's historically been difficult to constrain, but with this new geochemical method, we have new hope to explore ancient glacial environments, warm periods, determine how hot and how cold they were hundreds of millions of years ago.